Hello, I am Bob Durr, and in this video I am going to talk about exact logistic regression, what it is, how the exact method works, how to read the output, and how the statistics are computed. But first, the term exact does not mean perfect. This is just another method used to compute tests and estimates, just like maximum likelihood. You can use exact logistic regression when you have small data sets for which the usual asymptotic assumptions don't hold, and sometimes for separable data sets. For example, this data set has 18 subjects with three ratings and one of four drug dosages, and it is noted whether the subject has an event or not. The data has 12 cells, the events are shown in the left table, and the non-events in the right. There are at most two observations per cell, but for asymptotics to kick in, you want most of the cells to have at least five observations. Just looking at the data, it seems a higher dose is related to having fewer events, but rating does not look significant. If you run a standard unconditional logistic regression on this anyway, you can see the likelihood ratio and score tests indicate that some of the model parameters are significant. But the Wald test disagrees and says no parameters are significant. In the second table, you find that the rating and dose effects are not significant since you do not reject the null hypothesis that their parameters are zero. However, the joint test for the exact logistic regression says that not all your parameters are zero, and sure enough, rating is not significant, but dose is a significant effect. So the exact method identifies the significant effect, while the unconditional method fails. To discuss exact logistic regression further, you need a model. Let y be your binary response variable, and let the x vector be your intercept and a set of covariates. In linear regression, you model the expected value of y given the x, but the expected value of a 0, 1 variable is just the probability that y equals 1. In general, this is called an event probability. You model the event probability with a linear predictor through the logit link, which you can invert and solve for the probabilities p sub i. For an unconditional logistic regression, you set up a likelihood function, which measures how likely your data is to come from a model. This is a product binomial. For each event, you multiply by p sub i. And for each non-event, you multiply by 1 minus p sub i. Plugging the p sub i into the likelihood function expresses the likelihood in terms of the parameters in your model. Then taking the derivative of the, of the likelihood function and solving for 0 leads to the normal equations. Linear regression has a solution, x prime x inverse x prime y, but logistic does not have a closed form solution. Instead, you take an initial guess beta naught and keep stepping until you're near the optimum. This usually happens quite quickly. Once you've found the parameters that maximize the unconditional likelihood, you then perform tests and compute estimates using asymptotic assumptions. However, for exact conditional logistic regression, you split the covariates into two pieces. The covariates you don't care about are the nuisance parameters x sub n, and usually include the intercept. The other covariates are your parameters of interest, x sub i. You condition the nuisance parameters out of the likelihood and rewrite the likelihood in terms of the sufficient statistics. Since this is a generalized linear model, the sufficient statistics are just the y prime x. The key term in the conditional likelihood is the count function, capital C. The C in the numerator is the number of possible response vectors that produce the same sufficient statistics as the observed response does. The C in the denominator is the number of possible response vectors that give you the same sufficient statistics for the nuisance parameters grouped by the possible values for the parameters of interest. Generating the distribution of these count values is the key to the exact algorithms. After you have the distribution, you can use this conditional likelihood function to easily derive your tests and estimates. Let's create an exact distribution for this data, which has an observed response vector y taking values 0, 1, 0, 1, and two covariates, the intercept x0 and x sub 1. List out all 16 possible y vectors you could have had. The sixth vector is the observed response. Compute the sufficient statistics, which is just the dot product of y with x. The observed sufficient statistics for, are 2 for x0 and 1 for x sub 1. To condition out the intercept x0, Note that its observed sufficient statistic is 2, so find all the other y vectors that give t0 equal to 2, and accumulate all their t sub 1 values, and that's your exact distribution. Now that you have these values, the conditional likelihood is computable, and later you'll see how to derive tests and parameter estimates. But first, since this problem has only four observations, you can easily write out all 16 possible response vectors. But if you have 30 observations, you're looking at over a billion combination. 
and it grows exponentially. We need a more efficient method of finding the exact distribution of the counts. Exact logistic regression was developed in 1970, and within 20 years, several faster methods of creating the exact distribution were devised. The methods we will discuss rely on building the distribution observation by observation instead of by each possible response vector. To see how these methods work, use the previous example and consider the y equals 1, 1, 1, 1 candidate response. The values in red are the observed x covariates. What we just did was take the dot product of each y with each of the x and, for this response, obtain 4 and 4. Instead, start with t sub 0 equals 0, 0. The first observation adds the first y times the first x vector, giving you 1, 1. The second observation adds the second y times the second x vector. The third observation adds the third y times the third x. And the last observation adds the fourth y times the fourth x, again giving you 4 and 4. Gather all these intermediate computations in a binary tree of all 16 y candidates and note their sufficient statistics at each step. The y equals 1, 1, 1, 1 vector goes down the right-hand branch. The larger numbers are the intermediate sufficient statistic values, the smaller zeros and ones are the y values at each node, and the bottom row contains the same list of sufficient statistics you saw in the table for the complete enumeration. t naught equals 2 is the nuisance value. You could scan across the bottom row and pick out the t sub 1s to get the exact distribution, but let's be more efficient and trim this tree. These two subtrees are identical. Combine them, but remember to count it twice. The first two observations are identical. Instead of taking two steps, take one step from the first to the third row, and use binomial coefficients to make sure the triangles count double. On the right-hand branch, when you get to 2 and 2, you're done, because you must have y equals 0 for the next two steps to keep t naught equal to 2. Similarly, when you get to 0, 0 in the third row, you have to have two more y equal 1s. Take these shortcuts, and this is all you really need to check. The binomial coefficient for 1, 1 is added in parentheses, so you remember to count this double. Redrawing the tree, this is the multivariate shift algorithm, which is much faster than complete enumeration. But this can be even faster, especially when you have more observations, by turning this tree into a network. First, drop the t sub 1 values and combine according to the t naught values. So in the third row, the two t naught equal 1 and the two t naught equal 2 values are combined, giving you a network, which has exactly four paths from the top to the bottom. And stepping down each path loads your exact distribution just as before. Of the algorithms just discussed, the network algorithm creates the exact distribution faster using less memory. If you change the order of the variables and the observations, you can get a different network, which can certainly affect performance, positively or negatively. So now that you know how the distribution of the C counts is created, let's see how to get the tests and estimates by running an example from a handbook of small data sets. The covariates for this example are whether a child is anxious or depressed before entering the study, and whether the child has good or poor friendships. The response variable is whether the mothers think their children have recovered or not. Notice in the data step that the anxious poor cell has no data and the depressed poor cell has zero events. Unconditional and exact logistic models are fit. The out dist equal option outputs the exact distribution into a data set. The joint option computes a joint test of the significance of all the parameters. The estimate option displays the parameter estimates. And unconditional logistic regression gives quasi-complete separation, so it's done. Moving on to the exact results. Here's a heat map of the exact distribution, conditioned on the intercepts sufficient statistic being equal to 28. Each cell contains the proportion of the sufficient statistics count in the distribution. The cell for the observed sufficient statistic for diagnosis and friendships is circled, and this entire distribution is used for the joint test. To compute tests and parameter estimates for diagnosis, you also fix friendships at 28, so only this slice of the distribution is used. To compute tests and estimates for friendships, you fix the diagnosis sufficient statistic at 13. Notice, for later, that the cell for the observed sufficient statistic is at the edge of this slice. Overconditioning is a big problem for exact logistic regression, because you seem to be throwing out a lot of information to produce tests and estimates of univariate statistics. 
However, oftentimes creating a joint distribution is not feasible, and computation over the slices is the best we can do. Here's the exact joint test, which says some parameters are significant. These exact statistics are derived from the entire heat map. For each cell in the distribution's heat map, a probability was computed by dividing the cell's count by the total count. The probability statistic is that value for the observed sufficient statistic, and the probability p-value is simply the sum of all probabilities in the heat map, which are smaller. The score statistic computes the weighted distance of a cell from the mean sufficient statistic. The p-value is the sum of all the probabilities of cells that are farther from the mean than the observed sufficient statistic. And the mid-p-values adjust these for the discreteness of the distributions. Here are similar tests for each effect, which show that friendships is significant. These results are based on the slices of the heat map. The exact parameter estimates are based on the slices and say friendships is a significant predictor, with an asterisk. Your analysis is done. Friendships is a significant factor for recovery. Let's finish up by discussing the underlying computations. Here's the conditional distribution function for a single parameter across its slice. And for diagnosis, you can use Newton-Raphson to find the parameter that maximizes the function. But since the observed sufficient statistic for friendships lies at the end of the slice, the maximum likelihood estimate does not exist. So instead, look for a median unbiased estimate, which is just the beta that sets the probability of the observed sufficient statistic to one half. For confidence limits, look for the betas that make the probability of a larger or smaller value very small. The one-sided p-values are the probability of larger and smaller sufficient statistics when the beta is zero. For the two-sided p-values, the minimum of these p-values is doubled. In this video, you saw when to use exact logistic regression, you built an exact distribution in several ways, and you stepped through an example. There is a lot of talk these days about analyzing big data, but when you perform an exact logistic regression, you are using big computations on small data, and an innocuous looking problem can require a huge amount of time and memory. Because of this, you shouldn't just apply the method to any problem you come across. Use asymptotic analyses when they're applicable, but when you have small and sparse data, you can choose to try exact logistic regression. Here are some references for the talk. This talk was based on the last paper, which is available from the SAS website. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have learned a little bit about exact logistic regression.